Hey, what's up everybody? Clayton here with Go Analytics, and today I have a brand new video for you. So today I wanna show you how to create a Gantt chart using 100% native visuals in Power BI. So let's get started. Hey, welcome to our YouTube channel. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications to stay up to date on all of our latest videos. All right, so today we're talking about Gantt charts in Power BI. So in all of its glory, Power BI still lags behind when it comes to Gantt visualization. When you're trying to visualize your project progress, there is currently no visual that's straight out of the box. So there's been other videos out there showing you how to do it with a column chart. Um, but today we're going to be able to show you how to create a Gantt chart with a matrix visual. And the cool thing about this visual is that it allows us to do more drill down and be able to get more insights rather than what is currently available with the um, column chart or bar charts in Power BI. So let's head on over to my laptop and we'll explore how to do this. All right, so here we are in Power BI and I wanted to show you this Gantt chart before we start to build it. Um, so I'm, I built this thing with using 100% native visuals and uh, the visual that we're using here is the matrix visual. So as you can see here, we have several projects that we're tracking and we have the Gantt here that shows their progress. We can see which projects have been completed, which ones are in progress and which projects are still planned to start. And the cool thing about using this visual is that we can actually use the drill down interactivity. So if I turn on the drill down over here, I can get for more information about the uh, owner uh, project one. So if I click on that project now, I can see all of the different phases and their progress here, whether it's been uh, completed, whether it's still underway or which uh, phases are still planned. And the cool thing is that we can still uh, drill it down uh, on the hierarchy so I can get more information. So who, who was each sign, uh, each task assigned to, uh, what was the start date, completion date, as well as the progress for each of these individual phases. And I can drill back up and uh, see that summarized view and Using the uh, hierarchy drill down, we can actually expand all of this. So for all projects, we can get all of that information and uh, be able to see for each project, uh, all of their uh, completion in progress or planned. And we can also use the slicers over here so I can see, you know, I can filter it down by priorities. So I can click on critical here and see any tasks that are critical to our project here and uh, see what their status is for, for each of them. So that's kind of the, the layout here that we've built. So now I wanna head on over to the Power BI desktop and show you how we build this. All right, so here we are in Power BI desktop and uh, we can see the our Gantt chart here with our matrix visual. Uh, but let's take a look at our data model uh, just so that we can uh, have a better idea of what this looks like first. So here's our data model. And as you can see, we just have a very simple uh, dummy projects database here and we have a dates table. And the important thing to notice here is that there is no relationship between these two tables. If we take a look at our data here, uh, you can see that our dummy data just has a uh, the project name, phase, start and end date, who it was assigned to, the priority, progress, status. And then we just created two columns here just to order our projects in a specific order as well as our phases. So to create this Gantt chart, the first thing we need to do is create a DAX formula to tell Power BI whether each of these dates that we see here, whether the project is within each of these dates 
whether it is in progress, whether it's completed, or whether it's still expected to start. So if we take a look at this measure that we've created here, this project status, we can take a look at it and uh, try to understand a little bit what's going on here. So we, we're using a few variables here in this uh, measure. So the first variable here is we're creating a variable that gets us the project start date. And we're using the min function here uh, on the start date from our dummy projects data set. We also create a variable for the project end date. And here we're using the max function. Uh, and the reason why we're using the min and the max here is because each project has different phases. So if we want to get the overall start of the project, then we need the, the first date in the start date column for each of the phases. And if we want to get the overall end date of the project, then we need to get the maximum of the end date uh, within that uh, data set. The next variable here is we're creating this uh, selected date start. So this is the date column in our date table. And we're using the max function here. And we're also getting the selected date end. So this is the minimum of the date column in the dates table. And the last one is the current date and we're just using the today function. So what we're returning here is we're using the switch function to assign different variable, different values based on whether each of the, these conditions are met. So the first condition here is checking whether a project is in scope or if it's outside of the project dates. So in this case here, if the selected date, so this is the date that would be uh, used in our matrix visual, if that date is before the project start date, or if the selected date um, is after the project end date, then we are assigning a blank value to it. The second condition here is if the project end date is before the current date, then we're assigning a value of three, which is to say that this project is completed. If both of these conditions are met, so if the project start date is before the current date and the project end date is after the current date, then we're assigning a value of two, which is to say that the project is in progress. And otherwise, we're assigning a value of one, which is to say the project is still planned. So let's start a new report page here and work through that. So we're going to create a matrix visual. And here we're going to put our project in the rows and our project status in the values. And we're also going to bring in our month and year from the dates table into the columns. So now we see this table uh, full of numbers here, um, but it, this is the essential foundation of our Gantt chart here. So now all we have to do is just do a little bit of conditional formatting on this, and we should start to see this look like a Gantt chart. So we're going to go ahead and do a little formatting. Uh, one of the things I'm going to do is change the layout from uh, the default to none here. I'm also going to take a look at the column subtotals here. And one of the things I want to do is remove the bold on this and then turn it off. And same thing with the rows. I want to remove the bold and turn it off. And the reason why we do that is because when I add additional um, additional columns to this uh, to the rows, I don't want it to be bold. I want it all to look like one simple um, uh, unbolded 
uh, column for each of those. So now we need to deal with the values. So let's go ahead to cell elements. And we're going to add a couple of conditional things here. We're going to do it on the background and we need to change this uh, conditional formatting. By default, it's been set to gradient, but we're going to change it to rules. And we're going to have a few rules here. So I'm going to add three rules. The first rule is if the value is three. And the second rule is if the value is two. And the third one is if that value is one. So if it's three, that means the project is completed. So I'm going to give it that green color. If it's two, that means the project is underway. So I'm going to give it that pink color. And if it's one, that means the project hasn't started. So I'm going to give it that gray color. So now we can see here that it's starting to look like a Gantt chart now. So we're starting to see, you know, projects color coded based on their status um, and it follows the um, dates on this table. We're also going to add icons here just to add a little bit more style. And uh, we are going to have three rules again. So we're going, it's going to be the same three rules if it's equal to three two or one and if it's three that's our project completed so we're going to give it that check mark if it's two that means the project is underway so we're going to just give this pink uh, circle and if it's one we're going to give it this gray circle so now this is what we get but the problem with this is we actually don't want those numbers so we just want the icons. So let's go back here and change that. So we can change that by changing the icon layout. So right now it's saying that the icon will go left of the data, but we can change it to just show the icon by choosing icon only. And now here we have our Gantt chart. So the next thing we would need to do is just do you know any sort of styling that we want. Uh, so that we would end up with a chart that looks like this. So um, that would just require us to, to go ahead and do a, a bunch of styling. Uh, and um, then we would be able to do all of the, the slicers and any other uh, visuals that we want on this page. If you want to check out how we did all of the formatting for this uh, matrix visual as well as any other elements on this page here just check out the video description we're going to be adding a link down there below where you can actually download these power bi template file so just click on that link it's all free so just go ahead and download it and you can see all of the formatting that we've done to get our matrix visual to look like this gantt chart here so that's it. That's how you can create a Gantt chart using the matrix visual in Power BI. We hope you liked this video. We hope it was informative for you. And we hope that it's going to allow you to project manage way better using Power BI. All right, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. And we'll see you in the next video.